Good day all. Uh, today we're going to be looking at how we can find uh, the chemical formula for some simple compounds in IGCSE chemistry. Um, so these are the basic steps that you'll use every time when you try to find the chemical for simple compounds. And we actually use these steps when we work with more compound compounds, but we'll deal with that in a later video. So step one is that we write down the names of the compound. And I'm going to show you what I mean in a few examples, but we just write down the names, put a little bit of space in between them because we're going to be doing all our steps underneath the compounds. The next step is, is to write the chemical symbols under the um under the elements. And this is just to make it easier to find it on the periodic table because we're going to be using the periodic table in our next step. The next step is probably the most complicated step in the whole process. It's finding the combi combining power of the elements by seeing the minimum amount of electrons the element needs to gain or lose to become stable. So now here, looking at our periodic table. So if we take an element like, let's go boron, okay? Uh, boron can either, we need to either needs to gain one, two, three, four, five electrons, or boron needs to lose one, two, three electrons. So therefore we know boron's combining power is three because it only needs to lose three electrons to become stable, to have that what's it called outer electron full. Uh, just another example, let's go uh, sulfur. Sulfur, as you can see, it's, a, it's quite a simple one. It's only two away from being completely stable or what's it called? One, two, three, four, five, six away from being what's it called, um, stable if we had had to lose electrons. So what's called, we know the combining power is two because we would rather gain two electrons than go through all the process of losing all six electrons. Okay, uh, but we'll go through more of that as we do the examples. Um, then the last step you see, step number four, is that you see if the ratio can be simplified and cross-multiply the simplified ratio. And that step, I can only really explain to you using an example. Okay, well, actually, I'll keep the steps here so that you can keep an eye out. Okay, so the first one we're going to do is, is, is we're going to find the formula for uh, aluminium chloride. Okay, so we go to step one, we write out the two what's it called uh, names of things. We have aluminium and chloride. As I said, we put a little bit of space in between because we're going to be doing our steps underneath. Step two, we go right find the chemical formulas for them. So we know aluminium is Al, chlorine is Cl. And as I said, that just makes it easier to find it on the periodic table. So step three, we need to find the combining power. So before I actually show you what it is, let's go look at our periodic table. Let's go do aluminium first. Uh, what's it called? It's one, two, three, four, five to become stable if it had to gain. And it's only one, two, three three that it has to lose in order to become stable. So we know aluminium is therefore going to have a combining power of three. Chlorine is nice and easy. It's in the second last thing. It'll always want to gain an electron rather than lose the seven electrons it has. So we know chlorine is going to have a power of one because it only needs to gain one electron. So there we have our combining powers nice and easy. Now, the last step, as I said, is that you're going to need to see it to what's it called actually understand what's happening. Now, you see here we have a ratio, okay? The ratio is three to one, okay? There's no way we could simplify this ratio any further unless we started introducing fractions, like a half, uh, uh, 1.5 to half, but that doesn't serve us any purpose in what's it called uh, chemistry. So what we do is, is that because that's the most simplified ratio, step four, we just write down our two names of our compounds again. I mean, our two, um, uh, what's called symbols for our compounds, and then we cross multiply. So the three is going to go to the chlorine and the one is going to go to the aluminium. So therefore, the formula for aluminium chloride is what's it called? ALCL3. Okay, that's one example. I'm going to now show you an example where the uh, ratio actually does make a difference. Okay, so now here we're going to find the formula for barium oxide. And barium, I, you guys probably wouldn't have had uh, many what's it called, seen it much, because it's actually quite low down on the uh, periodic table. But let's go through our steps before we get to the periodic table. So first of all, write down the names. It's a nice, simple thing. You just literally separate them, barium oxide. Then we need to find the formulas, okay? So barium, as I said, we don't really work with this often, but it's uh, down here in group two of the periodic table. It's all the way down here. But it, no matter where it is on the periodic table, the rules stay the same, right? And then oxide, it's made of oxygen, uh, what's called uh, elements, uh, the elements oxygen. So we just write the O and we know oxygen is in group eight over here. So now the next step is to go find the combining power. 
So now here you see barium is in group two and therefore needs to lose two electrons in order to become stable. So barium we know is a combining power of two and oxygen is in group six, which we also know also just needs to lose two electrons to become stable. So they each have a combining power of two. So now for step four, remember what I said is that the first step is that we have to see if the ratio simplifies and what else can two two dot dot two be simplified to? It can be simplified to one one because two and two, what's it called, are both um, factors of two. So you could just, uh, what's it called, say it's a one to one ratio. So now the last step is we write down the two elements, we cross multiply, so the one goes to barium and the one goes to oxygen. So we know the chemical formula for what's it called, barium oxide is BAO. And that is basically all the steps and you do when you're doing these type of problems.